Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville and welcome to our second month of our Rainbow Rainforest. I think that last month was super cute with the capybara. I even found a really cool TikTok video of somebody who had rescued a capybara and I just was obsessed with them all month. But now my new obsession has turned to a pink river dolphin. So pink river dolphins are also known as an Amazon dolphin, a Bodo, and they have some other names but did you know that they are not born pink? They're actually born gray and much like a flamingo where the environment really affects the feathers, well the same goes for the pink river dolphin. So a lot of it is males naturally are a little bit pinker than their female counterparts and also how excited they get or what they're eating, their diet, how much sun they see depends on how pink they are. I think that's a pretty interesting fact and also that these guys are like nine feet long and 400 pounds. They are very bendy and that's because the vertebrae in their spine is not fused together like some dolphins so they can move their necks in 90 degree angles so that they can kind of maneuver around all the tree roots and things like that pretty interesting stuff so anyway we're gonna take our pink river dolphin and commemorate it in patchwork and we're gonna follow the instructions in the pattern just like we did last month the dolphin itself is pretty easy I really didn't have any issues I'm gonna take you through your fabric choices and we're gonna learn how to use a new tool called the quilters quarter marker or the quick quarter marker actually it's it's gonna help you draw that line diagonally from corner to corner on the square so you can just follow the line rather than trying to guess the, the diagonal line or whatever. So hopefully you like that. Uh, because we are making all of the leaves again this time and there are just a lot of repeats there, I'm gonna take you through a little bit of chain piecing. But the sewing this month is fairly easy as long as you promise when you cut out all of your pieces that you're gonna label them because there are a lot of things in these instructions as you can see. You So print out those labels from our Bernina of Naperville website. It, the link is right in the hand out for this class and also um, you can go right to our downloads and handout sections and you can also access the Elizabeth Hartman labeling sheet that we put together and I think this is really going to help you just manage all of the little pieces because this month because our dolphin is a little asymmetric you're going to see that you have a lot of singular cut pieces and some of them are four and a quarter some of them are four and a half and by labeling them it'll just help you keep everything in check and I have to tell you I labeled and then I accidentally labeled something wrong so that posed a little bit of confusion for me but I was able to figure it out so you have plenty of fabric if you do cut something wrong don't worry you can cut another piece and then find that other piece you know like next year when you're working on another project <laughs> all right so let's have a look at some of the fabrics and let's have a look at some of the sewing tips for this month and then off you go you're going to be obsessed with pink river dolphins this month and you're going to enjoy making this block you're going to choose your fabrics this month and um here are our sets for our leaves and i already made those because you saw me make them last month but just as always make sure that you label them correctly by the proper set make sure that you've got the right half the right square set up to make these half square triangles and just be mindful of that um, i did do some chain piecing to uh, sew the corners on because some of these uh, leaves come in sets of three this time and so it was just easy for me to make them that way and also I used this little quick quarter marker with a uh, heat vanishing pen this month to mark my diagonal lines on my pieces and, and you can see me doing that there and uh, I like doing this especially for uh, teaching beginners because sometimes with a beginner I can eyeball it pretty easily but uh, sometimes others just need a little bit of extra help. So um, you're going to put these aside once you make your leaf units and then we're going to go on to the Pink River Dolphin. So the dolphin itself is made up of this Essex linen in this um, pink and white woven 
linen and then the whiter linen or the actual white rather than the ivory linen is what the belly of the dolphin is going to be made of and then we just need a wee little one inch square of this for its eye and then just like every other month the background is going to be out of this essex linen that we have the five yards of and um and now that that's it it's time to start cutting labeling and getting started all right so here's our pink river dolphin and we're gonna sew this together in the configuration that you see and you can see my little piles here of all my little bits that i've labeled so i'm gonna go ahead and get started let's have a look here on page 18. So page 18 is kind of where it's gonna lay out for us everything that we need to cut and how we're gonna sew it together. And, you know, we pretty much got the gist last month with our little um, lessons on how to sew some of these diagonal junctions together. You know, this is just like putting two uh, pieces of binding together and then sewing the little half square triangles. And don't forget, we're gonna use that quick quilters marker and one thing that you'll notice as I make my piece is I really don't cut all of the pieces I just cut the S part and leave the J part I find that that is a little bit more accurate when I go to piece everything together so I'm gonna go ahead and just sew these pieces together by figure and then once I have the figures together then it's gonna get sewn together based on the diagram that you see here with our spacing blocks like KK and the LL and all of that. So this should go together relatively quickly. The cutting is the hardest part. So when I'm sewing a unit together, this is the um, figure three pieces here that is sewn to another piece with a little half square triangle. But you can see here that sometimes I don't trim this off and this was getting a little bulky here. So I did trim some of the pieces. So anyway, when I sew this, I just find that I can get a better idea of what size I'm working with and it's a little bit more accurate for me than, than cutting things off. But it also is important to have a nice iron that will get thing, things flat. And you also might wanna invest in a clapper. So I'm gonna stitch this together and show you how you can use your clapper to get these seams nice and flat. So we're gonna press this down. And if you can see here, I've got my clapper. This is a wooden clapper. It's, I use it a lot for garment sewing. I can press like collar seams and stuff like that on there because it get, get in a little tight fit. Sometimes when you just wanna press a seam but not press a whole garment, you can use the top of this. But it also has some weight to it and it's good when you wanna set a seam. So I'm gonna turn this upside down and you can see here, that I've pressed some of my seams open, just like that. But now I wanna take this piece here and press it open. And so I'm just dry pressing this right now to kind of get everything set. And then I'm gonna hit it with some steam and put the clapper on it. And now the idea is that that's gonna cool into position like that, and then we have a seam that's totally flat. It really is pretty awesome. So here's an example I'm working on figure six, where I've got two relatively thick pieces. I drew my line and sewed on it, but now I am going to trim this about a quarter of an inch away. I could use the rotary cutter, or I'm just using my little Karen K. Buckley scissors that I like, and I'm just gonna trim, and I'm gonna press this open to get it nice and flat. And so we can open it up like that, and then finger press, or use a pressing tool, or even your iron. But we're gonna open that up like that, and it needs to be nice and straight. And now we have our unit six.
Now see, that wasn't so bad. This is totally easy. So even if you haven't started yet, it's not too late. We still have some of these rainbow rainforest kits in stock here. And as you know, here on our YouTube channel, that's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville, you will be able to find this video forever, or at least as long as YouTube will allow us to post our, their, our content to their site. And hopefully that's gonna be a really long time. So uh, pick up a rainbow rainforest pattern, continue, make block one if you haven't made it yet, sew along the pink dolphin with us, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next month when we make dun dun da a sleepy little sloth. That guy right there. You know what? I think I might enjoy making this one even more than this month, just because sloths, they're so gosh darn cute, aren't they? <laughs> All right, I'll see you next time.